Uh, that's the algorithm at high level. Now, one critical thing about the hierarchical clustering is you need to define a distance metric. And this is going to be a little bit more complicated uh, because we're defining a distance metric between clusters, not between individual points. And that gets a little bit tricky. So I'm going to talk about five different ways uh, to measure distance uh, between clusters. So um, this, uh, th this, th this material tends to be difficult, so try to, uh, tr to, tr try to pay attention. So the simplest one, and that's the one that corresponds to what we did on the previous slide. It's called uh, nearest neighbor or single linkage clustering. Uh, what you're doing there is you're basically connecting the points that are closest to each other. So you look for a pair of points that is closest, and you connect those points, and by virtue of that connection, you connect the clusters to which those points belonged. Uh, if you try to formalize it mathematically, what you're doing is you have two clusters, C1 and C2. Each one of those clusters has a bunch of points inside. And what you're looking for is you're looking for a pair of points that is as close as possible. And that is your definition of the distance between C1 and C2. So I look over all points x1 in C1, all points x2 in C2. I look at the Euclidean distance between x1 and x2. Right? And I pick the minimum Euclidean distance. So the two points where one point was in cluster 1, another point was in cluster 2, and the distance was the shortest. Right? So here's a little example. In this example, I have three clusters, the red, the yellow, and the blue. And when I'm measuring the distance between the red and the yellow, I'm going to pick the two points that are closest between the red and the yellow. So those two points, they're the closest. And the value of that distance will be the cluster distance between red and yellow. Okay? Now, how do I use that distance? I use that distance to decide which clusters I'm going to merge at the next iteration. So in this case, I have three clusters, red, yellow, and blue. And if I'm using that single linkage criteria, and if I'm looking for the minimum, for the pair of closest points, which two clusters am I going to merge? I'm going to merge red and yellow, right? Because red and yellow, these two points are pretty close, and blue is further away. So any point of blue, the, there is no pair that is blue and red that is closer than this red and yellow. And there is no pair that is blue and yellow that's closer than this red and yellow. So in this case, I would end up merging red and yellow. Great. Everything's simple. Um, now, complete link is sort of the opposite of that. And the reason you use complete link is Single linkage, it's nice, it's simple to implement, but it has one bad flaw. Um, what it leads to is it leads to these chains formed in your data. So if point A is close to point B, and B is close to C, and C is close to D, and so on and so forth, you start connecting these little uh, edges, and pretty soon you're going to have A and Z in the same cluster. So single linkage algorithms will find these chains uh, that go through your space. And sometimes that is not what you want. Sometimes you don't want long chains as clusters. You want sort of clumps, right? You want spherical little bumps. And there's no way to get that with a single link clustering. Um, to get those spherical clusters, you need something called the complete link. The complete link defines the distance between the two clusters as the maximum over all possible pairs x1, x2, where x1 was in cluster 1 and x2 was in cluster 2. So what I'm doing, again, I have my two clusters, red and yellow. Now, instead of looking for two points that are as close as possible to each other, I look for two points that are as far away as possible. And I'm going to take the distance between those two points as the distance between red and yellow. Okay? So in this case, those two points are as far away as possible. Uh -huh. And I'm going to use that distance as a measure of distance between red and yellow. So if that is not making any sense at all, another way to interpret this. Suppose I take red and yellow and I merge them. What would be the diameter of the resulting cluster? Okay. And the diameter of the resulting cluster is you find the two points in the cluster that are as far away from each other as possible and take the distance between them. That's going to be the diameter. 
So another way to interpret complete link is as a distance metric, it pretends to merge the two clusters and ask the question, what is the resulting diameter? Okay. <clears throat> now, if you use complete link and you have these three clusters, the red, the yellow, and the blue, remember, you're using the distance to decide which pair to merge. So what are you going to merge? I'm sorry? Blue and yellow. Yes. Okay. So you're merging blue and yellow because out of all the three pairs, right, you could merge red and yellow, and there the distance is that. That would be the radius. You could merge red and blue, and the radius would be that. Or if you merge yellow and blue, the radius is probably between that point and that point, or maybe that point and that point. But the, 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 the final diameter uh, is going to be smaller for merging, um, for merging blue and yellow. So that's complete link. Um, and of course, these are sort of the extremes on the scale. A uh, single link leads to chain, chains, sort of long stringy clusters. Complete link tries to minimize the diameter of the cluster at each iteration. So what it will prefer is it will prefer uh, sort of spherical uh, clusters. It will first connect all the individual pairs and then will try to... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and then we'll try to sort of connect the two pairs that result in the most compact cluster uh, in the D space. Uh, so uh, these are sort of extreme, um, and uh, you have ev everything in between as well. So uh, you could define average link clustering. Average link, the distance between the two clusters, is just the average of all pairwise distances across the two clusters. So I take all pairs of points where x1 is in cluster 1, x2 is in cluster 2, so all of the lines, uh, measure the distance of each one of them and divide by the total number of lines. So uh, that's sort of like the average distance of the points in one cluster uh, to the points uh, in another cluster. Um, centroid clustering uh, is similar to average link and uh, implementation actually ends up being very similar. Uh, what you do there is you end up uh, when you have two clusters, you form a centroid of each cluster and then see how far away the centroids are. Uh, and that is your distance between the two clusters. Um, uh, one of the better metrics out there is called uh, Ward's distance. And uh, what, that, um, what that method does is um, it pretends uh, to merge the two clusters, uh, sort of like complete link. But instead of looking for the diameter of the result, it looks for the aggregate deviation of the result. Right. So if I had the red cluster uh, and the yellow cluster, I, pre I pretend to merge them into one. I then estimate a centroid for the resulting cluster. And then I look at the sum of the squared deviations of all the points from the new centroid. Now, for the different merging pairs, you will end up with different deviations, and then you pick the merge that results in the smallest deviation from the new uh, centroid. So what you're doing is, uh, you're, you're at some level, you're comparing uh, the deviations that you had before the merge, right? Each cluster had its own centroid and some deviations within it. Uh, and then after merging, all the deviations are going to grow, but necessarily, they will always grow. Um, so you're just looking for uh, a merge that results in the smallest amount of growth. So uh, these are different ways in which you could define the distance uh, between two clusters.